Hello, my name is Albrecht. I'm with Ares, a startup from uh, Dresden, Germany. Uh, we are here at Mobile World Congress 2019 at the Seidings booth and I'm very happy to uh, talk a little bit about uh, our first uh, massive MIMO radio prototype right behind me. So maybe I start with uh, what is a massive MIMO radio? Um, the conventional radio in an LTE system radiates uh, in a wide sector. Even though at every single point in time only uh, one user is really listening. So what the massive MIMO radio can do is really focus signal energy right where it's needed. And that gives you two advantages. First of all, you put the energy where you want it to be and improve link quality and throughput to the user. And secondly, you can now serve multiple users on the same time and frequency resources. Uh, and by using beamforming, as we call it, we can minimize the inter-beam, inter-user interference by putting signal for user 1 to the left, signal for user 2 to the right, and we minimize the interference between them. So right behind me is our first massive MIMO radio prototype. Uh, it is an uh, 8 by 8 uh, configuration of uh, cross-polarized antenna elements. Uh, it features 64 transmit and 64 receive branches. Um, it supports three uh, 20 megahertz uh, LTE carriers, has an uh, IBW of 100 megahertz, uh, RF output power of 120 watts. Um, Maybe also worth mentioning uh, that the size of the array is not so much related to uh, the amount of data that we put in and, and radiate, it's really related also to the frequency band that it operates in. So this is a design for band 40. Um, we have done similar designs for higher frequencies, uh, band 48, and that would reduce the size of the array by almost four times. So the uh, very interesting uh, part about this uh, massive MIMO radio design is it's entirely based on Xilinx FPGAs. So why did we use Xilinx FPGAs? First of all, uh, time to market. The alternative uh, would be to have an application-specific integrated circuit, but um, for a startup like us, uh, doing a massive MIMO radio based on an ASIC is it's almost impossible because of the resources that it requires to do and the time to market. So we have uh, done this design in uh, roughly a year. Um, in my judgment, doing it on an ASIC-based design would require at least three years, and the cost of designing this piece of technology would be manifold, let's put it this way. Um, another good reason for using an FPGA-based uh, platform is flexibility. So uh, massive MIMO radio technology as a whole is, is not a mature technology. So the standards are evolving, the use cases are maturing, and what we can do in an FPGA-based design is change the processing according to uh, new use cases, uh, new product variants, um, or changing standards. So the Ares massive MIMO radio platform is not based on just any Xilinx FPGA, it's entirely based on the, on the Xilinx RF SOC. And that, uh, besides the advantages that we get from using FPGAs, uh, as I explained earlier, we get two additional big advantages. Uh, the first one is that we dramatically reduce the number of components on the board and the footprint that we need on the board. In the previous design, which were based on more traditional architecture using um, transceiver ICs, for the same kind of bandwidth and number of layers that we want, we used uh, 11 different ICs, two FPGAs, four transceiver ICs per FPGA and one calibration uh, transceiver, which makes it 11 ICs. This is now all done in a single chip, the RF SoC. The second advantage is that it allows us to go to much higher bandwidths which are required for 5G new radio in the future. So we have a very cost-effective, low footprint solution and path into the future for our massive MIMO radio platform design.